Coming up, an Apple monitor for a lot less money. Also, a new way to get your headphones to sound even better. And we'll go to my house to take a look at the newest from Roku. You got to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk. For our special offer, visit Stamps.com, click the microphone, and enter Before You Buy. Welcome to Before You Buy, the uh, product review show on the Twit Network, where we get a lot of great products in here and then ask our staff to take a look at them. Uh, I'm going to take you to my house in just a little bit. Where we're going to look at this new Roku stick, a Roku in uh, something about the size of a USB stick. It's kind of amazing. Also, uh, we've talked before about better ways to improve the audio coming out of your computer. Alex will show us a DAC that's pretty cool. But right now, I want to say hi to Chad Johnson. Hey, Leo. Who is uh, the producer of all of the big shows on the network. Oh, also nice. does his own little show called OMG Craft. Mm -hmm. It's not so little, actually. It's really great. All about Thanks. Minecraft. Uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, is it Ron's Mods, Gary's Mods? Gary's Mods. Gary's Mods. I need to talk to you. i got to get some help on the Gary's Mods so, a little later on. Right. Okay. okay. We'll talk yeah. after the show. I want Slender Man to right. appear in right. my Minecraft, <laughs> right. if you know what I'm talking I about. I do. I do. Unfortunately, he yes. does. Yeah. This is kind of an interesting story. This is a monitor, Shimian. I mean, it's not right. a well-known brand name. Right. Uh, but they use the same panels that Apple uses for their very expensive cinema displays. Right. How did you find out about this? This was this was something I wanted a higher resolution display than a normal HD display. And so just searching around and in going through Amazon, Newegg, I decided to check let's check out eBay. And there were all of these really inexpensive monitors that were from South Korea. And they looked a little sketchy. And so I did some more research. And it ended up that uh, PC Per had written up a really great article on them. And I, I decided to, to test them out myself and purchased one for myself. It's part of your all-new gaming PC, which exactly. you built on know-how. Let's take a look at Chad's review of the Shimian. Hello, my name is Chad Johnson. I'm with Twit and Before You Buy, reviewing the Shimian 2560 by 1440 wow. monitor. Now, why review this monitor? We don't yeah. tend to review monitors on Before You Buy, but this monitor is different than any other monitor because of its cost. This monitor comes from Korea and costs around $320. Similarly spec Dells cost around $800 and Apple, they cost $1,000. The panel that they use for this monitor is actually the A- stock of LG's, and let me read it off so I don't get it wrong, LM270WQ1 27 inch panel. That's actually the exact same panel that is in Apple's 27 inch Thunderbolt display. Of course, this is the A minus stock. And what does that mean? It means that there may be dead pixels or stuck pixels when you buy this monitor. In fact, on the seller that I got it from, they claimed that up to five pixels could be dead or stuck and that would not constitute a refund. A little bit scary when you think about dropping $300 on something that may have a few flaws. This monitor only has a dual link DVI port in the back for connecting. It also has power on, power off button, brightness buttons, and then there are disabled buttons that would be used for on-screen display or volume. It's good to point out that without an on-screen display or any on-screen menus at all, I can't calibrate this monitor using hardware. I have to go into software on Windows or Mac and change the screen temperature or anything like that if I want to calibrate this monitor. 
There's a few things I want to point out about the style of monitors. I had to buy mine off of eBay. The only place to buy these is off of eBay. You can't get them in physical stores in America. Now, there are a bunch of different brands when you search for a 1440 monitor on eBay. Catleap is one of the largest ones that's coming to mind. There is an interesting thing that you can do with a few of the models of the cat leaps. You can actually overclock them to a higher refresh rate. Normal monitors come in at 60 hertz refresh rate and these using hardware overclocking and software overclocking can be overclocked to 120 hertz. This is the only monitor on the market that has a 1440 pixel ratio that can be overclocked to 120 hertz. The other thing I'd like to mention is that this monitor ships with a Korean plug. All you have to do is discard that plug, find an American one, because the power brick has the same three-pronged port that any power brick has. So go ahead and switch them out and you'll be fine. Let me get into the pros and cons of this monitor. The biggest pro is cost with an exclamation point. Also the resolution coming in at 2560 by 1440. And finally, the possibility to overclock these monitors into 120 Hertz, the cons. The possibility of having dead or stuck pixels. Also, this has only a dual link DVI port on the back. There are no on-screen controls for you to mess around with hardware calibration. And finally, a less than desirable stand. This stand, all that it can do is tilt up and down and uh, the bezel around it is a little bit thick for some of the larger monitors. Buy, try, don't buy for the 27 inch Shimian monitor. I'm going to say buy. I am really glad that I personally purchased this monitor the price is astounding, and for what you get, I'm very, very happy, and I would suggest that you get one as well. I have been Chad Johnson for Before You Buy, been, and I Twit. have been. I don't Thank know why I say that. I used to be. So I was Chad Johnson. <laughs> you have been. That has been Chad Johnson. Right. Right there. Well, you know, it's a gorgeous looking monitor, I have to say, but you see what you're not getting by paying a right. third of the price Apple charges you right. or half the price Dell charges you. You're getting a bezel that's been that's used for other things. There are there are speaker, you know, uh grills in the back. No, no speakers. speakers, no camera on the no front. Camera. Um and but the panel's the same panel, and that's the point. But right. you but you can't return it if you have five or fewer dead right. pixels. That's annoying. Did you get any dead pixels? I didn't. I didn't. I, you can do some quick tests. Just search for for dead, dead pixel checker online. There's some flash um, uh, animation style tests that'll that will hopefully show any dead or stuck pixels. I didn't have any. Um, and then on the eBay seller's page, it says up to five can right. be dead on your panel and you and it does not constitute a refund. Right. In fact, I don't know. It might be difficult to get a refund. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. We, we didn't try to get any service, but I imagine these guys are hard to right. reach. Um, and then uh, the other thing is, is we I had a little bit of uh, problems just before the show. Started we never got it working on a Mac. It working on a Mac so with the, a adapter. There's only one connector on here. It's a dual link DVI connector. Right. Your PC happens to have a dual link DVI connector on the back of it, right. so it was no brainer. You just right. get a normal cable. But most other devices don't. Right. Macs, for instance, don't. The, uh, the newer Macs have Thunderbolt or right. HDMI. You'd have to get an adapter. And we never did get it to no. work. And then the final thing that I didn't cover in the review that I'd like to say is latency, lag latency, is really low on this monitor. That's because, important for gamers or right. action people. We've been watching a Trey Ratcliffe right. video, by the way. So how low is it? It is about, it's a, as low as the gaming, as the monitors that are sold for gamers. This is, this is. Eight I or went, nine milliseconds. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm basing this off of the PC Per article right. that they used, you know, uh, uh, cathode ray tubes are supposed to be this lowest latency. They're zero effectively. Right. right. And, and they were close to the LCDs wow. that were aimed for gamers. So this, that, for when you're building a gaming PC with a dual link monitor output, this is fine. Uh, right. You're going to have better speakers anyway. You don't need a camera. Right. As long as the display is good and fast, that's great. Right. Well, thanks, Trey, for letting us use your uh, video. Thanks to Chad Johnson uh, for that review. 319 bucks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. For a 27-inch display. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. Of Appreciate course. it. Uh, we're going to, in just a second, we're going to go over and talk to Alex uh, Gumpel about a, a new headphone amp that he's been using 
for a while called the FIO. But first, I'd like to tell you how you can get out of going to the post office. How about that? When's the last time you, you know, I mean, Christmas is coming, Thanksgiving, uh, the holidays, you've got cards to mail. And I can tell you that if you're doing business, going to the post office during a holiday period is a nightmare. The lines are long. It's hard to get what you need. The good news is you don't need to go to the post office. No, I'm not talking a postage meter. I'm talking something much better. Stamps.com. You don't need a postage meter. You'll save money by using Stamps.com. Stamps.com lets you use your computer and your printer to print legit legal U.S. postage. Uh, whatever you need, whenever you need. It's kind of like hot and cold running postage, on-demand postage. You get discounts you don't get anywhere else, including the post office, like up to 21% on express mail. 15% on priority mail. And, of course, if you are an eBay or Amazon, an Etsy or a PayPal seller, you use QuickBooks, a variety of other software. The nice thing about Stamps.com is more than just printing stamps. It really it prints your envelopes, your mailing labels, takes the address from the website or your address book on your computer. It automatically fills out the forms you need. Things like international mail are so much easier with Stamps.com. And, of course, the best part, you don't have to get up and mail it. The mail carrier comes to you. You can even schedule free pickups. I want you to try Stamps.com. We've arranged a very special no-risk trial offer. Uh, this is worth $110, but you've got to use our offer code before you buy. So go to Stamps.com, click the radio microphone. If you don't see my face, you ain't getting the deal, baby. $110 bonus offer, $55 in free postage. You get a free digital scale. That thing is worth its weight in gold. And by the way, you get to keep that. You can cancel any time. But that scale is all yours. It plugs right into the computer, gives you the exact weight of all your mail, up to 25 pounds. You also get a supply kit and a month of Stamps.com to try. So give it a try. Go to Stamps.com before you do anything else. Click the microphone at the top of the page and type in before you buy. That's Stamps.com before you buy. All one word. All right, let me switch over. You got me switched to this microphone? Because I'm about to walk over to say hi to Alex Gumpel. Alex, as you can see, is a lab engineer. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. I always love this lab jacket. I got to get one for myself, a twit, twit lab coat. It says Alex Gumpel, netcast engineer. Because so that's, that's an accredited thing that I official. am accredited He's got to. a certificate. He's also got a little velvet bag. Yes, one of the many nice accessories this device comes with. So this is a headphone amp and DAC. Yes. You want to talk about the two different things it does? Sure. So... Um, uh, the headphone amp, it's, uh, it's a portable headphone amp that's battery charged uh, over USB. Um, and so it's you, like you have your iPod and you can take a cable out in the output of the iPod and into the input on there. And then it just boosts the output so you can have nice high powered headphones. Uh, so it's, of, it's louder. The it's iPod louder. headphones obviously don't really need this. Right, but, but if, if, you you, if you have some really nice high headphones, headphones right. you might want to have a little additional oomph. Right. Um, and you said it's lithium ion, so it just charges off the USB. Right, port. yes. Okay. You don't need to add It's got, got built-in batteries. But it's also a DAC, and I think right. that's kind of interesting. The audio that's coming into this is not coming out of the headphone port of your computer. Well, right, yeah. If you plug it in your computer, use the USB instead You're of gonna just You're going to use USB, out. and that, in effect, makes this an external sound card. Exactly. So um, a lot of times laptops, uh, their built-in sound cards are kind of crappy. And Same with desktops, right? And, yeah, um, unless you have a high-end one. Um, right. So if you like, if you're on the go with your laptop and you want to listen to good music or music at high quality, uh, you plug this in via USB, and then all the it's just digitally transmitted over here, and this converts to analog again for your nice headphones. Now, can I use it with my iPhone or iPod uh, with the not over analog? USB? No, uh, with analog, yes. I can't. Okay, so you can't use it for USB, but you, you can use it with analog. Right, USB is, is for PCs and Macs oh, or computers. Right. Something with a USB port that you can select. So in that device. case, you just use it as an amplifier. Right. Right. Okay, how uh, much? It is $100 list price, but street price you can find it for $65, $70 bucks or Not so. Not too expensive. There are, you know, DACs, digital to analog converters, that cost thousands of right. dollars. Right, so, so for the price, this is really good. Um, if you're an audiophile, then there may be some issues that you might have, but I'm not, so it's fine for me. Do you notice a difference though between this and just the output of your PC? Yeah, it's it's a little crisper. Um, there's not there's a little like a little bit of more hiss coming out of um, the PC. But PC. Well, that makes I, sense because a PC's you know a noisy environment's got a right. lot of RF bouncing around inside right, the box. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So you, it's nice if you can get the bits out of the PC and do the analog exactly. to digital or digital to analog conversion. Uh, externally, and that's what this does. Right, and it comes with some some handy things. This nice carrying pouch, but also this rubber band 
So um, if you have your uh, iPod, you can kind of strap them together oh, with that's this. Good. That's cool. Um, let's see. And it also comes with this nice rubber case for it because, you know, it's like an Apple device. It's, 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 a, one, it's a wannabe even, Apple device. Even the packaging looked like it was an iPhone. Yeah, so they, really they're really trying to make it kind of match And this that is thing. mirrored in lots of fingerprints, right, I see. It's, yeah, so this, this will protect the whatever that is. Right. Um, it actually, they make a, um, a small, just a um, headphone amp that looks just like the clip-on iPod shuffle. Uh, like it, it, it's exactly the same size, um, yeah. but so they're clearly trying to. I've used headphone use amps before. I uh, from headphone.com, they make their own headphone amps, and it can make a big difference in the in the imaging, the sound stage, the the, the how much the how good the stereo. Right. Sounds. This this doesn't really do much uh, processing. It has a has a bass boost, but that's I think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it it can get pretty loud. And uh, how long does the battery last? I have actually never uh, tested that because I only use it as a DAC. Um, never I, had I, haven't, it. I haven't been really on the road with oh, it. Oh, so. so it's USB powered. It automatically. Right. So when powered. you plug it in and use it as a DAC, it's Got just it. getting powered it off of that, and that's how you charge it too. When uh, if you're on the go, it's from Fio. Pros and cons. Uh, pros, it's just a, a affordable DAC that's high quality and sounds good. Cons. Cons. Uh, I mean, really nothing. Uh, if you if it was only hundred bucks, then that might be a little too much. But since you can get it for seventy bucks, I think it's great. So I take it's, it. It's, it's a buy. And also another thing is, um, this actually is part of a larger ecosystem that they have, which mm -hmm. they have a. Um, a headphone amp dock, which uh, is meant for if you have a desktop PC, it's got USB, um, but also um, RCA in and out. Oh, so nice. you can plug that into your uh, like high, nice speakers. Um, but it's it's just an amp. Um, but if you you can plug this into the top of that and then use it as a DAC also. Oh. So this is this is the DAC inside of it. And the other thing is just an amp, but you, you connect the two so and you've it, got a it whole kind of system. In other yeah. Words. yeah. F I I O. And where did you find this online? Uh, it was just recommended by Russell Tammany. Oh, Mr. Russell knows his audio. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Alex Gumpel is our flow master, the guy in charge of so many things. I don't even know what. I don't know either. Just some, stu some stuff in the basement. He's an expert on the TriCaster. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Hey, we're going to do something a little different. Normally, I'll do a review at the end of the show. But this time, I wanted to show you something in my house. The reason is we're all familiar with the Roku boxes. We talk a lot about Roku. In fact, you can even many of uh, you are actually probably watching right now on a Roku box. It's the device that adds internet access to your television so you can watch Netflix uh, streaming uh, data from Amazon.com and other sources. There are actually, at last count, over 3,000 channels you can get on your Roku box. But it's a box. Wouldn't it be cool if you could get all of that functionality in something the size of a USB key? Well, Roku's done that. They call it the Roku Stick. It just came out. It's 100 bucks. It does require a specialized HDMI port called an MHL port. Just so happens, I've got one on my Onkyo AV receiver. So let's head to my place and take a look. Welcome to my house. I wanted to show you something pretty cool that just came out from the folks at Roku. We've talked about Roku before. They make a box that adds internet access to your television, gives you access to Netflix, Amazon, Hulu Plus, and a lot of other channels. But it's always been a standalone box. Now Roku has a way to add its capability directly to a television stick. And you can see I'm using it right down here. It's the Roku stick. Uh, it has all the functionality of a Roku box in what essentially looks like, and I'll just unplug it here, uh, a USB key, uh, including Wi-Fi access. But this isn't USB. This is an HDMI port. The Roku streaming stick requires a television, or in my case, an AV receiver, with a special kind of powered HDMI port, an MHL port. Let me plug it back into the MHL port. This is an Onkyo receiver, pretty new, and so they have MHL capability. When I plug this into the Onkyo, it shows up as an aux device. The Roku stick is powered from the Onkyo by the uh, HDMI port. It has its own built-in Wi-Fi networking. And when I come back to the TV and go to the aux channel, You'll see in just a moment that the Roku box will show up on here. And it gives me all the capabilities. Uh, as soon as I installed it, the first thing it did, as is often the case with Roku, is it went online. I set it up with my Wi-Fi network, and it updated itself. It took a little while to update. Got the latest Roku um, uh, software on there. And now I get 1080p HD video directly into my AV receiver. So the Roku streaming stick also comes with a uh, Roku remote control. And this is the new Ro Roku remote, which allows you to play video games, uh, including Angry Birds. Uh, Angry Birds. It has a little AB controller. It has the other traditional Roku 
buttons, which if you had a Roku before, you'll recognize the home button, the OK button, the back button. But also they've added play, re rewind, fast forward. That's typical on the new Roku boxes. And this is a really nice feature, which I don't think is available on other Roku devices. Because this MHL port is connected directly to your AV receiver or to your television, it has volume up and down buttons, which actually work on the receiver, the Yankee receiver I have. So obviously there's some sort of handshaking going on between the uh, Roku streaming stick and the receiver. Now, after I updated the Roku streaming stick, I logged onto my Roku account. If you've ever had a Roku before, you'll have a Roku account. It immediately added all the channels that I already knew about, uh, that I already used, but you also can go to the channel store and see many, many more channels. Uh, one of my favorite channels is on here. It's, uh, it's a little thing called uh, Twit, and that's, that's kind of cool. So um, we're going to just quickly pay a visit to the channel store just to show you it has everything uh, I'd, I'd want. Amazon Streaming Video, Hulu Plus, Pandora. Yes, even Twit and Revision 3 uh, are on here. So this is Craig Mullaney's Shift Key software. It's part of the Roku channel store. And once you load it, uh, we'll be able to watch. Uh, let's just see what's going on. I think All About Android is actually on right now. So now I can watch Twit on uh, my big screen TV. <laughs> I can also turn it down. Um, which, is, which is really cool. It means that the Roku box, and it's giving me all four stars quality. You do want a Wi-Fi uh, connector for this. Yep, there's Eileen Rivera. We're watching All About Android on the big screen TV using the Roku streaming stick. That's pretty darn cool. Of course, uh, all the other Roku uh, channels are available, including the Roku channel store. Uh, you can see I have quite a few things on my Roku setup. Uh, it really, I have to say, uh, there are a lot of different devices you can add to your television to give it internet access. Roku is right up there with Apple TV is one of my favorite. It certainly has a lot more capabilities uh, than Apple TV in terms of the number and variety of channels uh, you can get. But it doesn't have iTunes. It doesn't have AirPlay. But I mean, if you just look at all the channels available on the Roku, you see this really is amazing. The Roku streaming stick has one more additional very cool uh, feature. Should we put Angry Birds on, on here? We can play a little Angry Birds. So pros and cons uh, on this. Um, I think the pros are obvious. This is small, compact, a very easy way to add internet access to an older TV uh, or a device that doesn't have internet access. I can watch Netflix. In fact, Roku has probably the broadest selection of channels available uh, today on the uh, internet. Thousands of channels available through your Roku, including most of the channels you want. Hulu Plus, Netflix, Amazon streaming videos, uh, and more. Uh, cons on this? Well, as you've seen a couple of times during this demonstration, it's rebooted. Uh, I haven't used it long enough to know if this is a reliability issue, a heating issue, uh, or what. The Roku box itself used to do that not too uncommonly. That's fine. I, I don't mind that. When I, once I'm watching a movie, it's pretty stable and pretty reliable. Um, it's 100 bucks, and you do have to, of course, have an MHL port, so you have to have the capability as well as Wi-Fi access. But uh, on the balance, I think the Roku streaming stick is a great product, uh, a really nice addition to the Roku line. I'm a big Roku fan, and I certainly recommend Roku. If you have an MHL port and you want a way to add Roku easily to a TV, and unobtrusively, it's a definite buy. Leo Laporte from the Laporte household saying thanks. So there you go. That's the uh, Roku stick, brand new. I was very excited when I heard about it. Of course, you have to have an MHL port, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of people. You can get it at a Roku box for as little as $69. But if you want compactness and the ability to kind of, many TVs now have MHL ports on the back, to add a Roku functionality to a television, this is a great choice. I give it an absolute buy recommendation. Hey, thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you to uh, also uh, to uh, whoever that other guy was, Chad Johnson, the redhead. Yeah. I've uh, seen him around the studio. Him. Big red. <laughs> big, big red yeah. we call. And thanks to you for watching. We make all of our reviews on Before You Buy available on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com slash twit. We will have our own address very soon. And you can email us. We've got a brand new producer. Shannon, come here. Just say hi, everybody. Snubs is our newest producer. It's her first day, so we didn't put her to work. Hi, Snubs. Hi. So she's going to be producing the show, and you can email her. Oh, I'm sorry. I just I just broke it. Uh, you can email her at byb at twit.tv. We want to welcome you to the team.
Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. And this is what we say at the end of every show, Shannon. You gotta watch Before You Buy. See you later. Bye-bye.